Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Britain Yankee Craft Beer podcast. And today, this is our first one for nearly a year where we have been out and about and actually in the same room as the person we're interviewing. Uh, I'm Phil Clark, the Brit. Welcome to the show. Uh, there's a brick wall behind me, which is fine. Hey, maybe I'll change it to something else. No, it is. It's a real brick wall, folks. Look at that. There we go. It's not a Zoom background. Uh, with me in the room is my good chum and co-host for this particular uh, um, edition, Mr. Ken McMullen. Hello, Ken. Hey, Phil. Hey, I like the, thing, I like the things behind you. <laughs> like the... the yeah, there we go. What are, milk they, cans. What, are they, what are they called? Milk cans, I think. Milk cans. <laughs> well, wonder why they're called milk cans. Well, I think you've let the cat out of the bag. We might as well introduce our guest for the show. We're down at Lagrange in the new, or one of the newest breweries in the area. It's Milk Money Brewing, and sitting there looking very nice with his hat, and he's got milk cans behind him, <laughs> is the head brewer, brewmaster, whatever you want to call him. Eric Pizer. Don't call me names. <laughs> Just don't call Just you call late. Just call me late to dinner. Yeah. yeah, don't call you late for dinner. Now, remember, guys, we have to look at the camera. Yeah, that's weird. Look, at, look in front of us because we're looking at people. Look. It's really weird. We're, in a, we're just socially distanced like, here. Phil's yeah. there. You can actually be Eric's in person. There. Let's, let's enjoy well, it. it depends on how you look at this, but it'll work out. Now, first things first, your name has nothing to do with any vaccines for COVID. I it's only Pizer, wish. right? I wish. It's Pizer. There's no F. I've, uh, my whole life, I've been one F short of Filthy Rich. So <laughs> P-I-Z-E-R, and that's me. <laughs> okay, good. Well, welcome to the show, and thanks a lot. The last time that we actually sat down and chatted was down at Workforce Brewing, where you were hanging out yeah. with uh, with Brandon and Amanda, and Ken was there as well. Yeah, yeah I, I, I spent a lot of time just crashing parties over there. I, uh, <laughs> uh, between my time, I, I don't know, we're getting ahead, but you know. No, go I, ahead. I was at Rock Bottom, and uh, I would schlep my kegs down there. I had a keg washer versus doing it by hand. Uh, so between doing that and then, uh, you know, I left Rock Bottom in December, and it was this past December. There was a whole year uh, before we before I finally made beer here. So uh, I had a lot of time on my hands in between there, between building out and doing other things. So I, uh, I found myself <laughs> in, in Plainfield quite often. All right. Well, you finally uh, <clears throat> have got going, and we'll learn a little bit about that as we uh, get into this. And, of course, it wouldn't be a Britain Yankee uh, podcast if we did not have samples. Now, we'll let you into a secret. We had a pre-match bevy, and I'm going to show you mine because... Oh, look, everybody's got one. <laughs> there we go. In these wonderful milk money glasses, this is an English pub ale. This was our pre-match bevy, mm, just to loosen up the old larynxes. And very good it is too, isn't it, Ken? Yes, delicious. Excellent. Right up my alley here. It's always good to hear something like that from anyone with an accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> anyway, our first official beer is one that Eric wanted to uh, showcase. And he has these rather nice looking, are they wine glasses? They're, yeah, they're just little wine sample glasses. They are wine sample glasses, okay. And they've got they've got like a stem on them, so I'm wondering how many of these are going to get broken by people Oh, I coming. broke one in the first like three minutes of having them. I was like, oh, look at this. And then I threw it on the ground, basically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do we got in it? This is LaGrange Lager. Um, oh. It kind of leaned into our area mm. and alliteration. And all that. Um, it's just a nice, you know, adjunct American lager. It's four point two percent, super crushable, real easy to drink. Adjunct, it's real light. Got, what do you got in there? Corn or corn and rice? Yeah. So, uh, rewind a little bit uh, with some of talk about Brando and some of my other friends are uh, surrounded by idiots. Is the little yeah. dumb series of beers we've kind of done here and there. But it, there's eight or nine of us, nine of us, I think, on a big text group. Um, and a couple of them were Brandon and Steve over at Hailstorm and then Brando right over at Workforce. And they were both separately working on their light lagers. Uh, Hotel Life at Hailstorm is a corn adjunct lager. And Brando was kind of mimicking old style with his old pile being all rice mm -hmm. as, as the adjunct. So I felt like I'd be copying if I used either of those. So I used both. Um, so I went hard into it. So it's like 25% corn, 15% rice, and, and the rest is mostly six row. So it's a nice, just really simple, um, but it's 
nice and light and it is very very light um wow. ken you just made a, a pilsner which i would say was at the other end of the spectrum because yours had a definite bite to it this is smooth i think you called it a crusher eric <laughs> i did because that's kind of what happens it's, it's really it's a good one to just have on tap and um i'm actually canning this uh tomorrow wow. uh, so i'll put some of this into 16 ounce cans and uh we'll have that available to go what what did you say the abv was 4.2 4.2 wow it doesn't <laughs> I think it tastes like, really delicious, like a man. two or three percenter, which is where you can drink a lot of them. This is going to be absolutely fantastic as a start in beer. Or alternatively, one of those ones you can have several of whilst you're mowing the lawn. If we absolutely. ever get to mow the lawn again and get rid of this snow, right? Uh, I mean, it's fine for shoveling snow, too. <laughs> it's good for taking a break after that. Just, it'll keep cold out there. Just, yeah, I was going to say. Don't leave it out there. Don't keep, set it down. It'll, uh, keep it'll, it it'll freeze pretty quick. So it stays warm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear okay so um great starter let's go back um a while to as i say about a year ago you were hanging out with uh, lots of people brandon included when did things start to really shape up for you and you were able to come in through the doors of milk money which i know had been hanging out there for a long time and was one of the victims i guess of uh, covid yeah, I mean, it was a lot of fits and starts uh, throughout it. Um, COVID definitely didn't help anything, but just like any new business getting going and, and start up and construction, there was hang up here, hang up there with, you know, a, a permit for this, a lead time for that. Um, it all just kind of kept going. So starting mid, <clears throat> excuse me, mid-summer, I was here pretty much every day doing some thing. Um, you know, our, our, our seller, like the, the, the fermenters and... and Bright Tank, uh, they got delivered to us last January. So they were sitting in storage, and then the brew house showed up. I think it was June-ish. Uh, and that was just sitting out in the middle of the room next to where the kitchen is now. And so it was just a lot of other stuff that had to kind of keep going. So it was just here helping push things along and, and, and get stuff hooked up the right way. And, and then once... Uh, once everything started to line up, we got the, the, the curb and the floors coated for the brewery area. We moved everything in. I started shuffling stuff around and then hooking this and that up. And, and then, then all the plumbing happened. And it kind of went fast, even though it took six months. But it, it, it felt like it really went by in a, in a blur. And then you know, next thing I knew, we were brewing the first week of December. When, when did you open your doors? First week of December. <laughs> brewing the Basically, first week. Yeah. Uh, like two weeks after... Um, that first brew so we opened up we started doing some to-go food because the kitchen was all ready to go everything else was was approved for licensing and all that uh so they started selling to-go food that weekend before christmas and i got my first beer on tap on the 23rd uh it started with it was fitting in a whole bunch of different ways uh the beer is called end is the beginning uh <laughs> it was uh it's very similar to a beer i first brewed professionally and uh uh, so it kind of made sense to do that. This is like, you know, the beginning is the end. It is the beginning of all that. Uh, it's also a little riff on, if anyone's a fan of the Dark Tower series from Stephen King, no spoilers, yeah. but spoiler alert, uh, the very first sentence in the book and the very last sentence in the series is the same. Oh. Uh, and I really dug that because I thought it was cool. You know, the, Have you seen the, the movie? The movie was awful. <laughs> which was a damn shame because it, it, it's Elba such did, a great right? yeah oh, he was fantastic the, but it didn't an exchange bond yeah. nothing else made any sense he would be good bond <laughs> um anyhow uh we put that one beer on tap and uh it was gone so that was the wednesday before christmas and it was gone by monday <laughs> wow. uh all crawlers wow yeah That's we sold cool. was, i mean it was fine but there was only one beer on tap so then i was here on christmas eve adding another beer and then the day after christmas adding another beer uh, so it was just kind of pressing and pushing and uh yeah people are coming in asking for i need 12 12 <laughs> 12, 12 crawlers uh, so it was unusual um but you know we were caught like it was a year plus in the making the holiday was there there was no reason not to start selling so we we, we did what we could and We've made the most of it. I'm up to, you know, by the end of this week, I'll have a dozen beers on tap. So we're getting there. 
Yeah, and they're all pretty darn good. Ken, um, you guys keep looking at each other, and it's yeah, really it's I know weird. it's well, like it's very annoying. You're all the way yeah, next we'll, to me. We'll though, get yeah. it. Don't worry, we'll we'll figure it out. I'll, I'll sit back in it. I'm not gonna talk. I'm gonna look at you out the corner of my eye. How, how's that? There we go. <laughs> oh dear, you were okay. gonna ask me something there, and I um, I was gonna ask you um, what <laughs> you were a member of Pale down in Plainfield. Were you a member of Pale, Larry? I was not a member of Pale. I never really joined oh. a homebrew club. I thought um, it was. <laughs> I've been around plenty of Pale guys and some meetings, probably. I don't know. Um, I was That's never because really... we don't get enough sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and on, you know, the Boss Homebrew Club, the Brewers of South Suburbia. I, uh, I guess right now that would be the club that I'm probably closest with. Mm. Uh, at least most of the guys there. Uh, but the only homebrew club that I ever actually attended meetings with was Hops, Homebrewers Pride of the South Side. Oh, right. Um, where, I mean, there was a bunch of great brewers out of there. Uh, off the top of my head, the, the only pro brewer that I can think of that came out of there was Gary Gully out of Alarmist Brewing. Uh, mm. Mm. That's how I knew him. Well, I knew him separate from all of this, but that's several other stories <laughs> several more stories yeah. all right well we're, we're going to backtrack a little bit to when you first opened but first we have to finish up their first beers because you're going to get us another one we're going to do three segments so you're going to focus on three of the beers that they want people to come and drink we we're actually going to do four because we already did this one <laughs> I won't all right talk. back in a sec okay you there okay there ken all yeah. right cheers yeah. all right I, I know you're a long way away, but, you know. <laughs> We're back. Second beer. In another one of these lovely, dinky little glasses. I, actually, if you twizzle it, the milk money, hang on, the milk money thing t dries around it. See, look at that. There we go. <laughs> beep, Mine, beep. Mine's back. Yeah, mine's back. Now, yeah, backwards. how does yours go? <laughs> it's backwards. Oh, yours is going backwards. It's in reverse. Now, if um, you have enough. <laughs> the aroma on this is definitely uh, a citrus type hop. Citra? One Simcoe. All Simcoe. Simcoe. Yes, sir. Okay. This, one's, this is what? Eric? This one is pause button. It's a uh, Pause button? Pause button. Like P-A-U-S-A. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Hang on. Yeah. I better like, check and see if I'm paused. No, I'm okay. Oh, good. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, another kind of really simple beer. It's just a little bit of crystal malt to, to give it a little body, uh, and it's all Pilsner, and it's just all Simcoe hops. Not quite a smash beer, but it's it's close to it. It's just take a pause. It's 5.5%. You Is can this just... Is this just an IPA? Just American just, just IPA? Just pale ale. American pale, pale ale. pale ale. Yeah, okay. It's only 5.5%. It's nice and easy. It's, you know, just enough bitterness to, to be bitter and see, not, not overpower. It's not scraping the enamel off your teeth. But, uh, see, yeah, I got, I got Simcoe confused. is nice and grapefruity. A little bit of, you know. Yeah, it's not the, too much. A little bit of the dainty though. pine, but not, not too much. I uh, got confused because you can see. I, oh, look at that. Nice one. You can one, see yeah. through it, Oh, I love we it. We do that, too. Um, lots of great color schemes here. <laughs> now, I got confused because an English pale ale would be a lot more malty, whereas this borders on, um, you know, an American IPA. It, it, totally. But I really like this one. <laughs> this is this is going to hit my spots. And now, so are you canning the beers? Some of them, yeah. So I, we, we bought a, a nice little manual canning line. Um, it is quite labor intensive. Uh, but it does it does a trick. Um, it's just a matter of like sourcing cans has been kind of difficult, as Ken knows. Uh, we were just talking can, about earlier. You can like, find them, but they're expensive. They're either so. expensive or far or hard to get or and you know I, I don't have a lot of space here. Um, you know, trying to buy a pallet at a time is, is difficult. Uh, but boxes of them are three times as much and you know it, it, it's hard but uh we've been managing uh the plan <laughs> is uh it's out the window you know we we were hoping to i, I was looking to just you know can 10 or 12 15 cases mm -hmm. of most beers and and then have it in a merch cooler ready to go you know you sit down you have lunch or dinner you have some beers with us and oh i want to take a four pack home i sold a thousand crawlers the first weekend we were open because that's all we had you know uh, things are different. We're, we're only doing to-go. Uh, now indoor dining has opened up a little bit, so there's a little bit more of the 
come in and enjoy it with us, but uh, people are also very much so stopping in um, to get beer to go. And that's part of the uh, our situation here in LaGrange. LaGrange was founded as a dry town. This was, uh, you know, uh, it was a, a Mr. Cassett. I, I don't r recall the, the, the old man's first name, but uh, Cassett Road or Street or something is, is, is right on the, the south of us here. Um, but he founded the town as, as a dry town. So there aren't any bars or taverns in town. They're all restaurants. You know, the, the hmm. couple places across the street here, they're restaurants. They, we have to do 60% food sales to alcohol. Um, so us oh. being a brewery in town, it was kind of a big deal. Uh, it took a lot of meeting with the village and explaining what we were doing and all that. Uh, there are no liquor stores in town. So, you know, we're right downtown. The Grange Road here is, is a nice, busy walkway, uh, a lot of foot traffic. So people are walking down and they just mm. stop in and, oh, you got beer to go. And so they, they, they grab some beer to go. It, it, I, I didn't realize that it was dry. And I know I live close to Wheaton and that was dry for a while. And, yeah, the dry and, city uh, brewing up there. Yeah, you know, thank goodness they saw the light. But yeah. <laughs> now they've got brewery. But um, so you're doing a lot of uh, food which is why when i came in through the door it was a very clean uh restaurant looking area but of course over in the back i could see the wonderful uh collection of fermenters and bright tanks and all lots of good stuff so over to ken because this is where he comes in yeah tell us about your system like size maker what uh, can it do? everything i have is from alpha they're out of lincoln nebraska um it's really great it's a nice i have a seven barrel system i've got four seven barrel fermenters and 115 and then a, a nice 15 barrel bright tank so i can i can move a decent amount i think my capacity is around 800 barrels um hopefully i can get there <laughs> uh it, it's just me in the brewery right now i don't have any help uh, there's not really much help that i could have um you know I, i've had assistance in the past at, at my other places um but i didn't want to hire anyone here until i, I knew how i wanted it done like I, it's been a while since i've really late you know uh so i was first at 350 brewing in tinley park and i opened that and, and built that and set it up and all that but i didn't know what i was doing that was just that was really crazy homebrew stuff uh and, figured it out and learned a lot in my time there and then after that I, I spent time at rock bottom which was already established and they had some sops and and a whole way of doing everything and so i kind of just fit into that and and, which, and learned a which lot rock from bottom there. was that i was the rock bottom out in warrenville and War okay yeah yeah i, I remember <laughs> there was uh who was the guy before you that rock bottom has had like a million different oh, okay uh, he, he had brewers. A, uh, the last one before me was ray gonzalez who's that's the guy currently head brewer in yep. downtown chicago yeah um as far as i know as long as they're still operating i think we, they are. we did a podcast with him and I, yeah so sorry ray i couldn't remember you know. ray's he, <laughs> he's a cool dude um but a lot of great brewers have come from there mark wilson who's now out at as we go oh, yeah was there before tim marshall who mm -hmm. was Salamoth, who actually left Salamoth and came back to rock bottom he's down in uh daytona beach oh um I'm trying to think who else came through warrenville doesn't well like, interesting i didn't realize there's, there's, mark was there well wow. Quite, quite a few people yeah. have gone Were you there, Ken? Uh, I used to go there in the 90s to pick up growlers. Oh, he didn't, he would, didn't brew that. I would fit <laughs> two drafts in while they were filling my growler every... That was like every Sunday, but that that was a, that that place is one of my early craft beer like memories, you know, was uh, Rock Bottom Warrenville. Yeah. So Party one guys. of the questions I got for you <clears throat> is that uh, I know Rock Bottom always used to have a, uh, a hand pool. Are you going to have a hand pull here? <laughs> I love cask beer. So British beer is is my, that's my in. That's what got me hooked on on, on all of it. So rewind all of it. Making beer, like I, 14, 15 years old, my first job was in a little grocery store in Elsip. Elsip certified, home of the shish kebab. Uh, but I worked in the meat counter and I was this little kid and I had to wait on the counter for all these little blue-haired old ladies and they asked me like how do i cook this pot roast do i look like i eat pot roast like no i don't know <laughs> uh but as i got a little older and kind of went kept going through it i was like well if i learn how to cook this pot roast or you know cube steak or whatever nonsense they're asking about I, like it's easier to be nice you know than it is to not know so i started learning how to cook things and you know i'm no chef or anything but i like to cook and i like to eat things that taste good then i got a little older and i started drinking and 
you know, I was able to get the, you know, the six pack of Bush Light at the grocery store for two bucks. But I could also, you know, I like the things that tasted good. So, you know, I, I was fancy and I drank Lion and Kugels. Uh, but oh. as it was going, I got into that Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Uh, you know, just I drank a lot of Guinness in college, uh, like all that sort of stuff. So it was it was about like things that taste good. And I've already forgotten where this was headed. Cascale here. <laughs> Cascale. All right, rewind. Okay, <laughs> rewind. Fast forward. So we're back to I like things that taste good. I, you know, all of this. Um, in 2003, it was, I went, my brother, my now brother-in-law was studying abroad in Oxford. And so my now wife and I Ooh, went, went Oxford. over to visit. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so we went over there to visit and he took us to this pub and he's like, oh, this is the Eagle and Child pub. Uh, C.S. Lewis and Tolkien used to hang out in the back room here. I was like, oh, that's pretty nerdy and cool. I like that. <laughs> and I had a bass ale on a long pole from the cellar and God damn, if that didn't change my life. It's just a beer. I'll always say, like, guys, it's just a beer. It's not going to change your life, except for the one that does. So that was the one that I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. Uh, and so I love that idea of just that, like you said, with this pub ale. Like, it's just real malty and bready and, like, caramely. All those good, like, earthy flavors are just where it's at. And the idea of, like, the the pomp and circumstance, like, the, the, the theatrics of, like, serving and all that is just so cool. I got to rock bottom, and they had these two beer engines in the back of the bar. I was like, yes, I get to finally do it. They were so in disrepair and and <laughs> old and unused and, like, not maintained that I could – they wouldn't – they were inoperable. And the corporate budget and this and that to, like, try and repair it was going to – like, they were built into the place. Like, they put them in when yeah. they built that building. <laughs> so – I would have to climb down underneath 20 years of back bar under bar grime to like try and rebuild it from underneath. So I never did. Uh, so as much as I would like to, I'm not going to put a beer engine here. Uh, it's, oh, that, it's a lot of stuff. Shoo, I would man, love, we I, got there. We got there, but <laughs> I would definitely like to eventually when things are a little bit more normal and enough traffic and enough excitement to try and do like a cask night here or there where, you know, right. freaking Friday or something like that. And, um, I like this a lot. This is clean, crisp. It's especially delicious and very aromatic off the uh, off the draft ken any yeah. uh, further comments on this oh, one it's just the the hops are so so fragrant and fresh on this it's obviously very fresh hops used in this and it's i love it it's clear you can see through this beer yeah, oh, yeah. i wanted to bring like the <laughs> then the lager in this like they're, they're, i make some clear beer uh these are old rest well this one at least is a pretty old recipe too um but Clear beers are hard to make. The, the, to do the hazy beers well are just as difficult. Like to pay attention to the ingredients and, and process and all that. But I thought this was a better beer. So, well, let's. Uh, I finished mine, so I think it's time for us to break again. Okay. And come back with uh, a third beer, uh, uh, which I think is going to be something a little darker. If. Well, um, thanks a lot for this one. Um, really like this. That's about it, right, Ken? Uh, Yes. Okay, we're breaking. <laughs> All right, we're back. Segment three. And a beer that has gone to the dark side. So we have gone from... Oh, hang on. There we go. Get it against the wall. We've gone from the nice light lager into the slightly gold and now into the black. This is a beer that I believe has the name of the brewery on it. Eric? Yeah. Um, I mean, with the name like Milk Money, it was hard to stay away from too many puns and, and jokes. So, yeah, this is Milk Money Milk Stout. Mm. Not the most clever thing, but uh, it works. So it's just a nice... Uh, Ooh. It's... More easily drinkable than its seven and a half percent would have you think, um, but it's big and sticky. Uh, it's a nice base that I'll play around with eventually. Uh, I just haven't uh, gotten around to adding anything. You know, adding some adjuncts. Um, I really like coffee and stouts. Um, mm. I'm not the biggest fan of the, all the big pastry stout craze and all of that, um, but I'll you know I'll dip my toes in and see how it goes. Well. But, I was going to say that you've got some competition because one of my, I think my top milk style 
is from Church Street, and it is that way. Uh, uh, what the hell is it called? Holy Cow. That's right. Um, because it has a slightly smokiness to it, and that's obviously the malt. This is equally as good. <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to say better for one or the other, but <laughs> this is absolutely Chuck's not fantastic. Listening now, yeah. <laughs> we, are, we, we are drinking this. It's a little bit um, cool because it's obviously come off the, uh, the tappers yeah. right now. So hopefully this is going to release some flavors. Ken, milk stouts, what do you think? Uh, this, this is pretty delicious. Seven and a half is a little scary. Yeah, because it, it drinks <laughs> like five and a half. I just, when I tasted this, it just made me think toasted coconut would be killer in this. Ken, <laughs> oh, know. no, no, no coconut, I love please. toasted coconut. Are you I saying that because you love like it or because it. you know how much I hate coconut? Really? Oh, oh thank you. I oh, despise hey. coconut. <laughs> I got a chum. I just can't stand it. Anything no, coconut, it, it just tastes and smells and looks like <laughs> sunscreen to me. Right? Yeah. Thanks. I can't do it. Which would be nice right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is very dark. And uh, I think that, that this having the... Is this going to be like the flagship beer because it's called Milk Money? I mean, I'll, so coming from Rock Bottom, I knew that, and going to Rock Bottom, I knew that the things that we wanted to do for, like, the pub style and a brew pub, where you got a restaurant and all of that together, was to have a little bit of something for every, everyone. So, like, I'm always going to have a dark beer on tap, and, yeah, mm -hmm. this will probably always be around. Uh, I'll mix and match a few others. You know, I'm brewing a porter next week. Um, oh, but I'm always going to have a, something like the buckets of, of uh, like styles. Like I'll have a lighter beer, I'll have something wheat, I'll have something malty, something hoppy, and something dark, and then everything else. So I think I think it's important in a in a brew pub environment that you have that range of beers. Yeah. To go with all the the food, and and that's something I want to bring up is the the quality of the food that's happening here. And in fact, Phil and I were talking about the dark beer and we're like relating it to this thing I just learned about today, black onions. I've known about black garlic, but I didn't know you could do that with onions too. I only black is beautiful. Right next to you over there is their black onion yeah. machine, fermentation chamber, chamber yeah. thing. I only really just like coming here learned about it. Like I've heard of people making black garlic in a crock pot over, you know, six or nine months in their basement. Uh, but we're doing it, um, everything we're doing here is very farm to table focused, very fresh. Uh, there's nothing going to the freezer. It's all real fresh. Like they, we butchered a pig last week and, and they're smoking the hams. They're curing and smoking the hams. They're doing the mojo pork. They're baking the bread um, and all of that and making mustard from scratch and, and all of that for their Cuban sandwich we have here. Like we're making every, like the burger buns on the burger, they're all from scratch. Like we're, we're baking that in house. Wow. That's cool. Um, I was tell, telling you uh, the black onions go into the French onion dip. It's just French onion dip, but it is by far the best French <laughs> onion dip I have had in my life. But yeah, they make, they're making black onions. They just, they're keeping it at 140 degrees for, I don't know, a, a long time six weeks or so at least and it um <laughs> tom the one of the uh cooks here was just telling us uh what it's doing is it's 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 slowly caramelizing the onions uh so it, it's doing all of the like caramelization of it but it's not breaking down any fibers or anything so it's like all it's the texture of caramelized onion or the flavor of caramelized onions without the but the texture of like a fresh onion which is pretty darn neat and it's making natural msg and all these things so it's um Everything is just really, really tasty the way they're doing it. And we've got a nice open kitchen, and like you were saying, like the brewery, the brewery in the back and the kitchens out front. So anywhere you sit in the whole restaurant, you can see that they're cooking in the kitchen and that there's a brewery in back. So it, it, it's pretty all-encompassing. That was really important. Um, <clears throat> the owners, are, you know, I'm one of the owners along with a couple other guys uh, and a few uh, local investors here too. Uh, but the main two are, are Matt and Lucas Bumba. They had uh, Solstice, uh, was a restaurant in Western Springs. It was a, a little breakfast brunch place, um, real, you know, fresh focused. But their background is just in service and, and, and fine dining. They've worked with Paul Verant and, and Matt used to work at one of the Alinea restaurants. And like they really have some, some interesting takes on, on, on how to do 
a lot of stuff. So it, it, it's all going to be really fresh. And, and, and the whole point is to do it all together where, you know, they're using some of my beer and the food and in a perfect world, we'll have beer dinners and tasting menus and stuff where we pair the food with the beer and, 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 and kind of go with like that, you know, at the open kitchen is the plan is to have seats there where you can sit down and have a little tasting menu uh, and and be right in front of you know the the wood-fired hearth that where they're cooking everything and you smell that as soon as you walked in yeah and i noticed that when i came in i said wow you got like an open wood fire thingy whatever oven <laughs> yeah they were what smoking, did, what they did were smoking, smoking? I, I, it was either salmon or trout or something yeah, for the, wow. the the fish dip that they're making you yeah know? like it's, it's all really really cool they've got a giant thing of car like onions that they're caramelizing right now i don't know, just a lot of i don't know that much about i like things that taste good <laughs> i don't know how to make them all but i like to eat them but ken ken you do uh, a little bit of uh, cookery i know you you've posted a lot of stuff about your fermentation i'm infatuated with fermenting foods i, I, I thought it was me you were infatuated the, fa with. the fact that it's so healthy and good for you and it, it's just it's neat how it changes and and it's from lactobacillus mostly it's all like i really had no idea there was that much bacteria all over everywhere everything. on everything <laughs> it's amazing it's incredible you wash these you wash your vegetables with soap and water and you think you're cleaning them and then you put them in salt water and they still ferment that's pretty crazy so you bring you bring up our friend mr lacto um are you going to be doing any sours come in the future uh based on the space constraints and <laughs> equipment and this and that i'm not going to do any proper sours where i'm using actual wild everything but i'll definitely play around with some uh kettle sours and and, and that sort of thing um a little preemptive not an announcement but I, you know i'll be doing something with my friend steve over at hailstorm and a little kettle sour action on that i believe all right that's you know, good getting yeah getting we'll, we'll back play around to that, with some of that that food angle um you guys are selling like market goods I mean, we've started doing some of that at Hotvine where we're, we're selling some so hot sauces and mustard and, and uh, we've got some, some jam. Uh, we've done dog treats, stuff like that. But you guys have market items too, right? I, I yeah. I think you've got like some, some chicken breast that you can buy through you guys from directly from a farmer yeah really? we were doing more of that over the summer um just to try and keep busy make money and 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 try to like start being relevant before we could do anything here um and they've continued some of it the whole like butcher shop and pantry this and that because we're making you know we were doing like dry mixes like pancake mix and and stuff that like was like our recipes and this and that and and you know the mustard and ketchup we're all making in-house uh, so there was like sauces and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, there's the whole butcher shop where we're dealing with, um, I don't even know all of the farms. I feel like I should, uh, there's Werp farms, uh, Slagle, uh, Perkins, Perkins custom cuts, uh, all these different places that are, are really like our burgers are like the meat is dry aged for 24 days or something like that. And then turned into burgers. It, it, everything's just super good and a real well thought out like combination of, of how to accomplish all that from like the farm to the table and all that so yeah we're still doing some of that so yeah i think through you know talk explore talk.com slash milk money brewing maybe it's milk dash money dash brewing i'm not sure uh, <laughs> i'll figure that out you'll I'll figure it out with a little, <laughs> little google search uh but yeah we're doing uh, different stuff like that we're making sausages we're doing like uh on the menu is like a um you know, a sausage with, I think it was a duck sausage with kraut and, and on a, like a lobster roll. Uh, they've done, yeah, lots of different I, I, breakfast I, sausage. Like all I would sorts like of to suggest stuff. something for St. George's Day coming up in May. If you're making your own sausages, make a nice Cumberland sausage and have it with mashed potato and gravy. Come pair it up with your British pub ale here. You got yourself a St. George's Day fun day. I've only heard about half of those words, but <laughs> it all sounds delicious to me. So sign me up. <laughs> Nothing know. like a good banger, eh, Ken? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one big benefit of working with a chef, having a really knowledgeable chef, is that um, if you're infusing different things into your, into your beers, uh, those guys know how to process things. <laughs> yeah. Like, I cut up a lot of stuff, but... I've learned so many tricks from chefs on how to really prepare 
different vegetables and fruits and whatever. Yeah, and we, it's, we've it's actually awesome. already started talking about some of that. Like I, I just put on a, a wit beer and I went the really traditional just orange and coriander route with it to start. But, you know, the plan is to use that with, with the food and this and that and, and to use whatever like different citrus that they know of that they bring in or different herbs and spices mm -hmm. for this and that and, and, and to kind of just play around with stuff like that. Because they're really into local as well. You know, strawberries aren't going to be on the menu other than, you know, June when they're fresh. Go to Costco and get your avocados there. That's, I, I, will. <laughs> I can do you a nice avocado toast. I don't know if I've ever had an avocado beer. I don't oh, an avocado I'm... beer. Oh, my God. Don't worry about that. There's some oil, I think, in there that might cause some issues. That would be amazing. But, yeah. Let's if do you that. could do that. I don't know. I don't know. I think avocado beer might be on the list with coconut. That, for that could be a... That sounds like a... Uh, surrounded by idiots. Uh, well, collab. that's something we would... That sounds like something we might tackle, yeah. And, and, and I should say that that is... Uh, you've released two or three beers surrounded by idiots right that was the what was the name of it again uh it's surrounded by idiots yeah. surrounded by yeah. okay <laughs> and you and you brewed them all down uh, uh, we've been over we did uh and hailstorm we did one it was just yeah. called surrounded by idiots i think we brewed at brickstone that one was take it to 100 okay um we brewed out at barn town alex loving good yeah. he's got his own podcast maker and me uh it's excellent um <laughs> And where else? We brewed another one. Oh, at Workforce, we did Danger Zone, yeah. where we, <laughs> during that brew day, we built a <laughs> quarter, pipe. A quarter pipe for uh, skateboarding. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> and, and Brandon Banbury nearly died. Like, he definitely was concussed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, um, I'm going to finish off my sample, and you have actually brought up another beer. So I think we need a, a post podcast summary beer. Um, we'll take a real short break and come back. Is it wit time? I believe so. All right, we're back for our uh, summary beer, which I persuaded Eric to go off and get. And here comes my milk money cart in reverse. So we go, look at that. Now, mine looks very... A uh, light. Yours looks a little bit uh, more golden, Eric, and I think it must be just the fact we got lights in here. Just the lights and background, giving yes. it different. And we have different uh, uh, cameras as well. Um, why is mine looking mm -hmm. light? That's what I want to know. <laughs> anyway, this is this is Amai Whitbeer. Amai? Amai? I uh, am I? Am I? Uh, <laughs> am AI? I, I hopefully I'm not uh, appropriating any culture or anything, but I was just Googling mm -hmm. Flemish words, Belgian words. Wait a minute, you were Googling? Yeah. I was Googling. <laughs> okay. But well, in my Google quest, yeah. mm -hmm. I came across Amai as a Flemish expression for wow. <laughs> so I went for, with for it. For wow. Wow. And, cool. and the earth moved when he said that. That's yeah. cool. Wow, am I? Oh, yeah. have you got so, the oh my, oh my. Yeah. So it's just kind of a fun word, and uh, it's a real simple beer. Yeah, and this is real traditional wit beer. Yeah, uh, so I think there's not many people making Belgian wit beers because I think <laughs> people tend to, to <laughs> tend to immediately gravitate to Blue Moon, but when you come across one that's well made. Because um, everybody's looking for a hazy, and they get one of these, and they taste it, and they're like, oh, my God. It's like <laughs> a half of ice, and it's the original haze. Yeah. This is um, quite delicious. Thank you. What's in it? Not much. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. It's a little pills, a lot of flaked wheat, uh, like 40% flaked wheat. Uh, the coriander? And a little coriander and orange peel. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, real, real simple, real basic. Um, and then a nice Belgian wit yeast and... Uh, let some of those fun phenols and esters come through and, and, and awesome. got a, build got it a, all on top of it. Got a nice dry finish, yeah. Uh, but it's delayed. And so you kind of go, hmm, that was tasty. And it's then not so go, dry that it's a stringent. It, it, it just, it just <laughs> is not sweet. Yeah, absolutely. So you I know, guess in our, in our summary, we want to find out what's in the future for Milk Money. Uh, you've been open, what now? Fourth, no, well, since December, but... 
I mean, Where are we now? We can call it eight weeks. We can call yeah, it eight weeks. two weeks of real, like, close to in-person yeah. business. Um, in the future, um, I know the kitchen is planning on rolling out more and more food and, and kind of separating their menu out a little bit more into lunch and dinner. Uh, we'll probably do some brunch at some point just because that's uh, um, something that the guys have, have worked at before. Uh we're going to hopefully start doing some kind of regular beerish dinners, uh, regular-ish beer dinners. Um, I'm going to keep making beer, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, I like some hazy IPAs. I like some real traditional styles. Um, you know, my little passion project over the years has been a mild. <laughs> it's a dark English mild. <laughs> I'm the only one who drinks it, but, uh, I like it. And so I'm going to continue with it and do that. Um, I'm going to rotate through some other beers. Um, I, I've got 16 taps available to me to put on tap. I want to try and fill them up. Um, really like to just rotate through a lot of stuff. Uh, you asked before about like a flagship beer. Uh, and it's not up to me. That's up to who wants to buy it. Uh, you know, if, if the Milk Money Milk Stout is the one that people gravitate to, then I'll keep brewing it. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to kind of keep rotating through. Uh, there's a few that... I plan to or want to revisit and, and, and tweak and revise and make better and better and better. Um, so a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I like the hops. I like the English beers. I like, you know, everything in between um, except coconut. You like beer. Except coconut. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, Phil, I found a new test for beer. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I had this on when we started this. This is my mask. Oh, okay. But, uh. I helped carry some glasses out and went to the restroom during our break, and I burped into my mask. And if oh. your beer's still enjoyable, if you do that, <laughs> wait a, a minute. Test. Let I'll me try it. that yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> Which beer was that? Hang on. Uh, I think you're hearing all of them in there. Be careful. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I, got, I got to wait. I can't get one going. I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna mess up my hair. This mask. But we do actually, just to let people know, we do have masks and we are wearing them when we're not sitting here socially distanced. Yeah, we are yeah. obeying all the rules, uh, Governor. So, <laughs> um, well, it sounds as if uh, you guys are actually going to be doing uh, some really cool stuff here, particularly with the food and the beer pairing, which I think is going to work out really nice. I'm glad to see that you're doing uh, some classic styles. Um, the Belgian wit being a classic style. Oh, hang on. There we go. Um, do you have a hazy? I have one and a half, two on now. I have a, a hazy, a hazy double IPA. I have another hazy IPA coming out later this week, um, revisiting one that I've done before. Um, that'll be in Cannes. Vibrant IPA um, will be in Cannes later this week. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep doing that. Playing around, uh, uh, I was... Showing my partners earlier today, I was dry hopping one, uh, another new hazy. Actually, I have a couple coming up. And uh, just talking to them about how I'm trying to differentiate them because they all can start to blend into each other and, and get muddy with what's the difference. I mean, there's only so many juicy hops <laughs> and profiles or whatever. But I'm just trying to play around, you know, with the, the different hop combinations and the different yeasts because I, I like to use, like, the nice... British yeast that um, I can use in the pub ale and the hazies. Um, mm -hmm. Those have their own sort of like flavor profile of different fruitiness and that. And then the, some of the Kvik yeasts, the, uh, uh, those Norwegian farmhouse yeasts that ferment at a bazillion degrees and there are no rules. You can look at it and it'll ferment and, you know, uh, some of the fun stuff with that. So I like to play around with, with uh, different uh, techniques and ingredients and, and to try and, you know, make the beers not be so similar. I don't have to put out a bunch of it in cans and, you know, distribute it and keep it on the shelf and always have it be the same thing. Like, uh, you know, it's a brew pub. I got to keep a couple of beers that are familiar around and the rest of it I get to play around with and, and, and just experiment and, and, you know, tweak here and there. And Well, I think um, we've had a great sample, uh, Ken. Um, I'll raise my glass out there. Clink. You know, <laughs> we're all, are, we, are we close enough? Hang on, I can uh -oh. stretch over. I don't there know we go. We got a nice clink. You can clink with Eric. 
because I can't I can't yeah. reach over there. Um, we hope that you Can are a great success. I think that down there in uh, Lagrange, you're in a fantastic position on South Lagrange Road, and uh, I think that uh, you're definitely going to be a great big hit. Thanks. Yeah. So um, tell the people where they can find you. Yeah, we're at 75 South Lagrange, uh, and all the social medias: Milk Money Brewing, Facebook, Instagram, www.milkmoneybrewing.com. Uh, but right in downtown Lagrange, we're across the street from the Big Ace Hardware. There's parking on the street. There's a little parking lot here, and right behind us, we've got a, uh, an, um, an entrance and back there. There's a parking garage. So there's no shortage of free parking. Uh, so come and join us. I'd like to see you. Yeah, I managed to park right outside. You got, you got, you got, you got a pretty primo spot. Me. We've got a bit, nice big roll-up garage door. So once the weather starts to break, um, you know we're gonna have patio seating out there on the on the uh, walkway. There, it's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be fun. Sounds great. Cool. Well, um, thank you very much. This is a, a fantastic podcast for starting up again in person, even though we're doing it via Zoom. But then we've got video and audio. So it's good night for me. And good night from him. Cheers. Good night, Eric. Cheers, guys. Thanks a lot. Mm-hmm.